The following is an 18PR production. From deep in the heart of West Texas. And everybody knows Studio A or Ground Zero is at 18PR. And everyone knows 18PR is out yonder. It's a a one-of-a-kind, worldwide transmission. Heroes and heroines file. The free-range talent file. The unexplained files. The ain't love grand file. Michael Sean's campfire. And the Free Range Texan News Network. A clear and present detour on the road of everyday life. You're listening to the Free Range Texan Podcast. With our host, who's been voted the hardest working man in podcasting, Michael Sean. Thank you, sweetie pie. Episode 31 of our Free Range Texan Podcast. Proving once again, there is no business like show business. And speaking of which, we have Andy Wilkinson back on our podcast from the Southwest Collection at Texas Tech University. He'll be here not only sharing a bit of valuable information, but also singing one of his tunes that is one of our favorites. The entire Free Range Texan crew is here and on hand for the building of this podcast, including Foxy the Wonder Dog. We are a ultimately very secure facility here, the high budget Studio A at the 18 PR Studios. Foxy the Wonder Dog is on complete security duty here. Expensive? Well, maybe, but well worth it. Well, I almost don't know where to begin with some of the going on since we spoke last. We had a big, big high-level meeting in that 18PR conference room where the executive producers of the Free Range Texan podcast once again called me in for one of those special meetings. Now, they have put their heads together and decided that what the Free Range Texan podcast needs is a bit more color. Now, what they're talking about, folks, is content. And I asked them, what exactly do you mean? They told me they thought it would be a good idea to open up the telephone lines on our podcast. Well, being the type of podcast host that always pays attention, close attention to his podcast producers, I called the crew together and had them wire up a telephone right here to the production studio A. And we have that all set up. We're, we're ready to go, right? We can open up the phone lines. Free Range Texan Podcast, who's speaking? This is John Sanders. John, my old pal. What's going on, John? Hi, Michael. Have you heard that NASA has recently declassified some stuff we never knew about? No, wait a minute. This is kind of an inside scoop. Is that what you're telling me? That's right. That's right. It, it wasn't even a Freedom of Information Act. They just finally spilled the beans on this. So, here to recently otherwise classified information... Is about to release now on the Free Range Texan podcast. Is it, yes. Is that what I'm understanding? Yes. This apparently all happened in 1968. Oh my. And they had this, this special space capsule built, and they put like three or four cows in that space capsule, and, and then they shot it up in orbit. Cows in space? Yes. It, it orbited like three times and then and then splashed down in the Indian Ocean and, and was picked up by one of our aircraft carriers. Holy shamoly! 
Yeah, it was the first herd shot around the world. I am uh, I'm hanging up now, John. Thanks for calling. Yeah, they might be tracking us. Well, once again, we find ourselves on the bird dog point of podcasting. Let's saddle up and get ready to ride. Digital microphone will travel. Senor, what are you doing? Aiming high over the wall. You're listening to the Free Range Texan Podcast. It's time now. For another segment of the Free Range Talent File. Brought to you by 18PR. Bringing a host of creative media production and public relations services to our exclusive list of clients. Maybe you could hire the 18. And now, here's the next segment of the Free Range Talent File. Andy Wilkinson is a friend of mine. And when I think back about when did I first meet or where did I first see Andy Wilkinson, to tell you the truth, folks, I don't remember. Andy Wilkinson is a poet. He is a songwriter. He sings. He entertains. Plus, he has this whole other career. Seems like you're having the stretch to have friends when you when you're claiming people like me. Well, you know, it's funny, and I think this is a man thing. Uh, where you know somebody and you cross their trail, you think you know that guy, you get a grin on your face, you like that guy, you like to listen to him, you know his name, you think maybe probably he remembers your name, your friends. But years and years and years will go by and you never speak to each other. And then when you do, it's just like, oh, yeah, I ran into you last week. Isn't that kind of a man thing? Oh, I, I think it's a friend thing. I, a, a true friend, you can pick up uh, oh, after 30 years where you left off before. An acquaintance, you got to see them every day. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, uh, but, but a woman will say, but you never called me. Oh, uh, but you're talking about male-female relationships, Michael. <laughs> and I, 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 I'm not crazy enough to get to that. Guy. Okay, well, Andy... Thank you so much for being back on the Free Range Texan podcast. Again, a note for our listeners who, because uh, we, Andy, we picked up uh, a bus load and a half of great listeners all over the United States and in some other countries and so on and so forth. And, and they may not have heard episode 11 of the Free Range Texan. But if you go back to episode 11, Andy does a song there called It's Snowing Again in Lubbock. And we have a great interview with Andy there that we promise you'll enjoy. So uh, that's something you can do if you want to binge a little bit. But today we've got Andy with us. Uh, you are artist in residence at the Southwest Collection at Texas Tech University. You teach in the School of Music. You work with songwriters and uh, recording artists of different types there at Texas Tech. And uh, pick it up from there, Andy. Andy, what have I left off here? Oh, gosh, that uh, covers about all I can remember. I think <laughs> that keeps me busy. We're doing interesting work here at Texas Tech in these current times. This is a uh, an organization that is uh, defining itself for the next, uh, you know, we're about to, uh, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, we're about to have our 100th anniversary in uh, three years, in 2023, but our focus is really on the next hundred years and that's one of the great things about what's happening here and that's 
not just a Texas Tech thing, but that sort of describes the way we look at the world here on the uh, southern plains, the Ano Estacado. Uh, people often say farmers and ranchers are next year people. You know, it doesn't matter what's going on now. We're thinking about next year, and I, right. I think that uh, that's what's really exciting about what's going on uh, in our part of the world. Well, as you usually do, you really hit the nail on the head there. Well, Andy, we have listeners in uh, different parts of the United States and in different countries, and they probably do not understand uh, what something as uh, vital and valuable as the Southwest Collection at Texas Tech University actually is, or what that's about. Is is there a way to describe that in the, in the next few minutes? Well, an archive is uh, sort of like the uh, cross between a museum, which is filled with artifacts, and a library, which is filled with uh, books and other kinds of written information. Uh, an archive has uh, what we call first source materials. In the uh, library, you read what someone else has to say about something. In the archive, you uh, have access to letters and diaries and journals and business records, photographs, all manner of things that are the original source wow. for information. Yeah. Uh, along with that, we will have some artifacts. I mean, those letters and diaries and journals themselves are artifacts. But we will also have things that go along with them. For instance, if we have a collection of photographs, very often times we will have the camera that the photographer uh, used to take those photographs, uh, which when you collect it, you think, well, that's not all that big a deal. But we try to think about what researchers are going to find valuable and interesting 100 years or 150 years or 200 years from now. And so our our job is to preserve that information, that first source information for future generations. Well, I'm sitting here listening as you're describing all this, and I'm, I'm also thinking that we live in a day and time where a sad fact is a whole lot of our real, genuine history is being rewritten as we speak. And uh, uh, an archive like the Southwest Collection battles against that sort of thing. Wouldn't that be correct? Well, uh, you know, history is always always being rewritten. Uh, uh, in, uh, the famous dictum is that history is the story told by the victors, the winners. Right. We hope to, and that's all on the page one. That's the front page news. Uh, we like to think of our archive is collecting the page two news, you know, or as uh, Mr. Harvey used to always say, the rest of the story. We're very much interested in that. There's a, another thing that's happening, and that is the advent of magnetic media. Uh, uh, you know, we love it because we have now uh, recordings of uh, the Tolomaxes we're able to capture of uh, songs being sung in prisons. We have recordings that we all enjoy uh, in digital form. But the tape in particular, the analog tape that was used, uh, particularly after the Second World War, a uh, big burst in the use of that tape, all that's deteriorating now, even as we speak. So we have a big job of trying to preserve that, uh, that medium uh, or the information contained in that medium so that we can still hear about hear that later on. Uh, throw in that mix, uh, the whole issue of software. So probably most people, certainly the people my age and your age, Michael, who are listening, somewhere in a, the bottom of a drawer or in a uh, uh, little cubby hole in a file cabinet somewhere have got a big floppy disk or a uh, small uh, disk of some kind that they once held sacred as con containing their writing or their schedules. And now, even if they can find that disk, they probably don't have the software or the disk drive to be able to access that today. 
you know, we, do, we do a lot of that here at the Southwest Collection. We do a lot of digitization. Andy, I would, I would like to ask you about a rumor that I've heard on the street around West Texas here. Uh, my understanding is that the Southwest Collection at Texas Tech University is in the process now of building a new wing onto their facility there that will be dedicated to podcasting and podcasters from our region. Now, now, have you heard anything about that? Uh, uh, the only uh, different twist that I heard about that, Michael, was that you were going to fund it. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, we, uh, we, uh, I've actually uh, had some conversations with our archivist about how to uh, properly pod, uh, uh, archive podcasts uh, because we have a whole other issue that comes along with uh, uh, digital materials and uh, access to materials nowadays because of the um, recent changes in in intellectual property laws that have occurred over the last yeah ten, that, that's years. dicey at best yes exactly and no one and not only that not only has it extended the time period for intellectual properties protection it's now the author's life plus a hundred years. We still have it addressed in this nation, which is largely a nation that is uh, deals with its intellectual properties in a uh, legislative way as opposed to a common law way, uh, which a good part of the rest of the world does. Uh, we still don't know how we're going to handle things like mashups, uh, for instance, in the music world, or uh how how what fair use means uh, for uh, education and research. Uh, all those kinds of things uh, uh, are really still very much up in the air. And uh, uh, it's a thing I know that you have to deal with every time you sit down to do a podcast. That's true. It certainly is. Thank you. I ask you before we went on, could we talk about that a little bit? And you graciously said certainly that we can, and I appreciate that. Uh, also, one of the big reasons for having you back on the Free Range Texan is, of course, and we promised folks in Episode 11 that we were going to come back and do this, you also have a song about Texas when Texas was free. And I've always enjoyed that and wanted to get it on the podcast. Uh, will you give us a little bit of the backstory on that? Well, uh, thanks for your appreciation of the song, Michael. It's uh, one of the earliest songs that I wrote once I set out to be serious about songwriting. Uh, so it would have been in the mid-80s, I believe, when I, I wrote that song. And it was occasioned after I had returned to Texas from uh, Colorado, which is a beautiful place. but the problem with Colorado is that the view is obscured by all these mountains and trees. Colorado's got all that vertical territory that uh, a guy like me that grew up here on the flatlands uh, finds a little bit uh, almost claustrophobic. So when I got back uh, back to, to uh, the countryside in which I was raised, it was a, a real relief. And uh, um, I set about uh, doing a lot of traveling around the countryside that I had not done as a youth, where my traveling was spent mostly by driving around the hidey hole or the jet drive-in. Amen, uh, brother. Yeah, so, <laughs> and the char king, we don't want to forget that. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you're a kid growing up, you're going to school and uh, you're doing those things, and uh, 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 then you get to be an adult and you're busy working at a job. And, uh, so I had a little time when I moved back, and I, I got out and drove the country that I'd seen as a child, canyons off the Cap Rock, and uh, uh, tried to get back in touch with my own history, my personal history and family history in this area, and reminded me that those of us who live here now are not the first people. And although we like to call our parents and grandparents and great-grandparents and great-great-grandparents the pioneers, uh, really, the pioneers in this country uh, probably started coming here somewhere around uh, 12,000 years ago. You know, they were native yes. peoples, most of whom, most of whom we don't even know their names. 
um, but we we see the traces of their travel through here. It made me think, uh, or re- it reminded me that this is a place uh, that we are lucky to be in that has had that sort of long term traveling uh, occupancy late 1880s back to Comanche yeah all this place the Ano Estacado uh, they had a couple of names for it according to Dan Flores a wonderful book uh, by this name the horizontal yellow that's what they called the Yano the horizontal yeah. yellow and I think about that, and I think as a kid, you know, I remember uh, I didn't know the grass was supposed to be green till I was probably 12 or 13. <laughs> <laughs> but the other name they had for this place, the Comanche, was the place where nobody is, meaning that it was a place where people traveled across. And it, it makes sense. The water was only here periodically. It wasn't unless you... Uh, I brought it with you. Uh, you're likely to be very thirsty going across the auto. Uh, there weren't trees. There weren't places for, to seek shelter. Uh, it's a difficult country. And so you went across it, and you didn't stay very long, the place where nobody is. And so here we are. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, you really have to see it when you're in motion, when you're horseback or you're uh, – you're in a car or you're flying an airplane or something, then then the vastness of this horizon, gigantic nature of this sky, it becomes this thing all its own. And uh, so that those were the things that I was thinking about when I wrote that song. Texas, when Texas was free, not meaning Texas, the nation that it became after the revolution uh, from Mexico or the state that it became when it joined the United States or our wonderful, oddly described patriotic sense of what it means to be a Texan nowadays. I I was thinking about it, what this place has been like for a long, long time before we got here. I want to thank you, Andy Wilkinson, for being on the Free Range Texan podcast. And it is our pleasure to share your music Texas when Texas was free. Thank you, Michael. I was driving my pickup down off the cap rock in four wheel drive and down in low gear. Way back of the back roads at the end of the dirt roads, I took a wrong turn right into yesteryear. Don't know how it happened I must have been napping But the next thing I knew There was something that changed And the sky, it was wider Bluer and brighter And the wind was a song That the prairie grass sang It was Texas Before there was fences to see When the Indians Rode like the breeze Borders was nothing but a white man's disease Texas, when Texas was free All along the horizon I couldn't lay eyes on a fence Or a pole or a telephone line No microwave towers, no highways or houses, no oil well derricks, no trespassing signs. But there was buffalo grazing on top of a mesa and Comanches riding the ravines down below. They galloped their horses up the dry washes and shot with their arrows a great buffalo it was texas before there was fences to see when the indians rode like the breeze borders was nothing but a white man's disease texas when texas was free 
gun my engine When I saw the Indians riding like wildfire in my pickup truck They were shouting and screaming I knew I was dreaming But I was taking no chances with my scalp or my luck So I drove like the devil Pedal to the metal And I headed in the general direction of town All the way to the highway For I looked behind me to see What I could see when the dust had died down There was nothing but highways and fences to see And the barbed wire howled in the breeze Borders was as plain as a roadside debris On the Texas that once was so free But I'd seen Texas before there was fences to see When the Indians rode like the breeze Borders was nothing but a white man's disease Texas, when Texas was free You've been listening to the Free Range Talent File. If you'd like more information about our guest, just go to our website at freerangetexan.net. Also, submissions to be interviewed on the Free Range Talent File should be sent to our website at freerangetexan.net. digital recording device will travel. Hi, this is Michael Sean. I guess you've heard what people are saying about my campfire. Ooh. Ah. Oh. Well, there's one thing you can count on. Anything can happen on Michael Sean's campfire and usually does. As you listen to the Free Range Texan Podcast. I'm Michael Sean. Come join us at our campfire. Thanks to Barbara Smith for inspiring this story. Colleen Duncan pulled open the screen door and walked into the familiar old store. Generations of folks on holidays had counted on the place to keep a good stock of items that campers are likely to run out of or have simply forgotten to bring from the city. Colleen nodded to the well-pierced, thoroughly inked young man who stood behind the front counter. Outside, children played hide-and-seek in a nearby grove of trees, and adults strolled along the path to the lake. Another day at the campground had begun for everyone, except Colleen, that is, because before her day began, she needed to get cream for her coffee. She'd only been awake for a few minutes, but she could already feel that this was a day she would need to start with a good, strong mug of brew. (laughs) She and her friends had stayed up way too late the night before, but it had been worth it. They had had such a great time, all gathered around the campfire telling ghost stories. Colleen walked to the oversized refrigerator at the store's middle aisle, and with that ordinary movement, the world around her suddenly shifted. The children's voices that had been drifting in from outside were suddenly muted, replaced by an uncanny silence. 
Inside the store was utterly, eerily still. And there, standing right beside her, was a boy. He hadn't been there a second before. He was wearing a striped jersey and jeans that were way too short for him. His right hand was reaching up towards the top shelf. He seemed frozen in position. The air crackled like a lightning strike and clouds of mist began to bellow along the floor. Colleen looked towards the window to try to get her bearings, but that didn't help. Nothing out there was as it should have been. The trees were not the towering pines that she had walked past only a few moments earlier. They were pine trees, all right, but just a few feet tall. She turned and looked out of the opposite window toward the lake. The community dock wasn't there, only a rocky beach. She turned back to the statue-like boy standing near her. He was now turning slightly away from her. She couldn't see his face. If he was aware of her, he didn't give any indication. He was completely still, like he was frozen in time. That's when she noticed that he was slightly transparent, like an onion skin notepaper. She could see through him, but not clearly. Colleen drew a deep breath to steady her nerves as best she could. She watched in fascinated horror as the boy's image broke into shards and disintegrated. Then the world around her began to return to normal. She began to hear the children playing outside again, running around. The trees suddenly were huge again and growing all around the store. Other kids were cannonballing off the dock now into the lake and adults were milling around and taking it all in. Colleen made her way back to the screen door. The clerk with his many piercings and tattoos called out to her. You okay? Did you forget what you were supposed to get from the store? She shook her head. And from that moment on, Colleen Duncan drank her coffee black. I'm Michael Sean, just another little story from our campfire. Join us next time, won't you? Adios, my friends. a big free range Texan thank you to our friend Andy Wilkinson for being on our podcast and we're breaking camp on episode 31 you know I can't help but think if I told you folks if I spill the beans on what we've got coming up over the next few weeks and months here on the free range Texan podcast you would think oh my if you'd have told us uh, a year or so ago when we were getting this podcast off the ground that we would be talking with the likes of Trans-Siberian Orchestra or perhaps Michael Murphy, singer, recording artist, and so many others that we see in our future now on the Free Range Talent File, you would go, oh my, you shouldn't tell people that. And as a matter of fact, I think the producers of the show asked me not to mention it. But... 
keep it among yourselves. Anyway, it is a great time we're having here at the 18 PR Studios. This high budget Studio A with its top notch security, Foxy the Wonder Dog, and this crew is a magnificent way to get to come to work and produce this podcast. We're glad you joined us too. We've said this before and I'll say it again. Our numbers continue to grow and we are so thankful. It is with great gratitude that we appreciate more and more people in Texas and the United States and outside the United States around the world that uh, are picking up on this whole idea of the Free Range Texan Podcast. And we want to say a special thank you to the folks at Deep Creek and their great studio setup that they have there that have done so much post-production for us and particularly on this episode 31. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Take them home, sweetie pie. Thank you all for listening to the Free Range Texan Podcast, produced at 18 PR Studios out yonder in West Texas, with our host, who's been voted the hardest working man in podcasting, Michael Sean. Feedback or submissions to our program can be submitted on our website, freerangetexan.net. That's freerangetexan.net. This is Sweetie Pie on behalf of Michael Sean and the crew here in Studio A, where we're all looking forward to spending time with you on our next bi-weekly episode of the Free Range Texan Podcast. Y'all come back now. You hear? Range Texan Podcast. End transmission.